How good is your hearing? You may have had your ears tested recently, maybe you've never had them tested. I know I've got slight industrial deafness from all the clinking bottles from working at the brewery years ago and just 30,000 bottles of the line going clink, 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 and you, you had to wear ear protection, but often you would just be walking through because you think, ah, it's just five minutes, I'm just trying to go to the other side, and so you don't put it on, and well, it affects you. Well, Jesus had something to say about hearing and how we hear, and in one sense, he gives a hearing test, but it's not a physical hearing test. Uh, to do with beeps in the ear and, and the kind of sounds we can hear. But do we listen to him well? He told a parable, it's very famous, we're going to pray and then get into it. Father, we thank you for your word and we pray please that as you test our hearing now, that we will pass. Help us to be those who hear you well, who listen to your voice, who want to seek to understand and turn to you and be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 1. On that day, Jesus went out to the, of the house and was sitting by the sea. Such large cows gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down while the whole crowd stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, Consider the sower that went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell along the path and the birds came and devoured them. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it didn't have much soil and it grew up quickly since the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it was scorched and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns and the thorns came up and choked it. Still other seed fell on good ground and produced fruit, some hundred, some sixty, some thirty times what was sown. Let anyone who has ears listen. Then the disciples came up and asked him, Why are you speaking to them in parables? He answered, Because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given for you to know, but it has not been given to them. For whoever has, more will be given to him, and he will have more than enough. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. That is why I speak to them in parables. Because looking they do not see, and hearing they do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous, their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, otherwise they might see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn back, and I would heal them. Blessed are your eyes because they do see, and your ears because they do hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to look into the things you see but didn't see them, to hear the things you hear but didn't hear them. So listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the one that's sown along the path. And the one sown on rocky ground, this is one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, but he has no root and it's short-lived. When distress or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he falls away. Now the one sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the worries of this age and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But the one sown on the good ground, this is the one who hears and understands the word, who does produce fruit and yields, some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty times what was sown. It's a longer reading in our devotion than normal, but it's good to get it all together because it's this hearing test that Jesus gives to the crowds and you can see the result of it because some come and ask and some don't. Jesus often tells parables, and in fact, this one is the start of many. And right at the start, it said he told them many things in parables. Uh, who are they that he's telling? Well, he's telling these crowds that have come, to, they've gathered around, they're excited by the movement, they're excited by what's going on. Some of them are bringing healing, uh, people for healing or bringing themselves for healing. Others are just curious about uh, what's, what's happening, who is this guy, he's famous. And so they're flocking, much like they've, they've done several times already, most notably back in chapter 4 when they came from hundreds of miles, even internationally, to hear him and crowds of thousands are gathered around him. That's why he's in a boat and speaking. 
But unlike the Sermon on the Mount, where he spoke very plainly about what God's will is, the difference here is that in the Sermon on the Mount and in a lot of his sermons and addresses to the disciples, it's talking to the inside crowd. And much like he says here, to the inside crowd, I speak plainly, but to the big crowds, to the outsiders, to people who are just coming along to get part of the action or be part of the excitement of the day because something's on, them I speak to in parables. And so the parables were for the outsiders and the uh, straightforward teaching is for the insiders. And you might say, well, okay, well, that's because he was trying to dumb it down and parables are an easy way of understanding. That's been traditionally the way that preachers have preached parables. They've said, you know, it's like a sermon illustration. It's meant to enlighten and, and uh, help people understand by getting to a real kind of earthy uh, image in their heads and in, you know, making that application in their heads. But Jesus on the other hand, he tells the parable, no one understands it. The outsiders don't, even the insiders don't. The insiders come and ask him about it. And he explains to them, actually, I'm speaking in parables so that they won't understand. And that actually is part of the message of this parable that he tells. And so he's told this parable, the seed, there's a farmer sowing seed and he sows it uh, kind of randomly and it ends up in these four types of soil. Uh, the rocky ground, the, the, the path, the, uh, the amongst the thorny ground and then in the good soil and you get different results from different ones as we've heard. But notice in verse 9 he says, let anyone who has ears listen. And so there he's giving you the key to understanding what he's saying, right? Listen, he's, he, that is not a straightforward story. It's not just he's recounting you know, what he saw the other day out in the fields. There was this guy just throwing seed around and wow, let you know like when we have conversations about random people, it's not that. This is a story that's got a hidden meaning and so you've got to listen carefully. Anyone who has ears, really listen to what I'm saying. And intriguingly, only the disciples come to ask him, why are you speaking in parables? And what about this parable that you're telling? What does it mean? And Jesus explains, I'm actually telling these parables in order to fulfill Isaiah, that people might hear, but not hear, that they could see, but not see, because otherwise they might turn and I would heal them. And if you go back to Isaiah chapter 6, where this, uh, this prophecy comes from, uh, Isaiah has seen the glory of God. He's seen his vision of God in the temple. He, he can't see God because even that's too scary uh, he just sees the tip of the train of his robe and the seraphim flying around it is wonderful uh, picture of uh, a glimpse of heaven if you like and he's undone he falls on the ground as though dead and cries out woe to me woe to me i'm a man of unclean lips and i live among a people of lips. and one of the seraphs flies down and cleanses him uh, with a burning coal from the altar and it's looking forward to the lord jesus christ of course and his salvation but he goes on to say well i need someone to go for me be my messenger and as i says well i'll do it i'll do it and he says well go and tell them but they'll never listen to you they'll hear but not hear they'll They'll get something of it, they'll hear your words, but they won't understand. And actually, I don't want them to understand just yet because I've got to show them my justice, my judgment, in Isaiah's case, uh, in the Assyrian army coming and destroying them. In, in the case here, Jesus is going to be rejected by the chief priests, the elders and the people and uh, be crucified where the judgment will fall. And so he's speaking in a way that can't, isn't clear that can't be just seen through and be straightforward and so he has to interpret it uh, people say a picture tells a thousand words and and in one sense it's a verbal picture uh, yes but what words so all kinds of things you could mean by farmers sowing seeds and and so on uh, and so it's the authoritative interpretation of the message that people need to hear and one of the tests that he's given to the crowds is are you going to come and ask me what it means that's what the disciples do and the other parables following are going to be similar about they're going to be about the kingdom of heaven and about how you receive it or how you hear it how you perceive it and and do you want it 
And so here he explains to the disciples what the meaning of this story is so we can understand uh, as disciples what he's talking about. And so we can see the kind of way that the parables work. Uh, if we're willing to listen and to have ears and to go further and deeper, we can work them out. But it is a matter of work, of taking the words of Jesus in these stories and saying, well, what the heck does he mean? Because he's not trying to be clear, he's trying to be opaque. It's trying to be difficult to see. And so you've got to work at some of them. Well, in this case, he tells us exactly what he means. We don't have to guess. Uh, he says, well, here's what the, the farmer is God and he's sowing his word. That is the seed and it falls on these four types of ground. And it really, this is the way that people hear, respond, listen to the word of God. Some don't hear it at all. That's the seed that's sown on the path. The devil just, they're confused. They go, whatever. They just dismiss it and it's gone and it's snatched away. And so they don't even have a chance to have the word of God working in their hearts by the spirit because they're not, they're not listening at all. He says there's three groups though that do receive the word of God with joy. They hear the gospel and it resonates with them and they go, wow, this is great. And it seems to be taking root. The first group of those is the one that's the rocky ground, but it's shallow. It's there just in the surface and there's this immediate reaction. You can see life seeming to spring in thing, but as soon as the sun comes out, it withers and dies. There's no water, there's no depth, there's no root. And so they're gone. it's gone. And he says, that's the people who, they, yeah, great, great, it's being exciting being a Christian. You might think of people who came up through a youth group and just, oh yeah, we play games and we hang out and do pizza and, and stuff. And yeah, the Bible, yeah, that's great, yeah. But I've never really thought about it. As soon as there's any opposition, that's the sun coming out. As soon as people start questioning, well, hang on, you're not one of those idiots, are you? You're not one of those fools. You're not one of those antisocial people who's anti this, anti that, anti everything. Uh, as soon as that comes, they, they shut up and they like, no, no, I don't want it. And so they would rather walk away from the word of God and the gospel in order to keep people happy with them. And so they can't, won't be the target that uh, is in people's sights. He says, so that's, the, that's one type who's received the word. Then there's a second type that receives the word. It's grown among weeds. That he, and he says, there's, it could, the weeds are all sorts of things. There's the, the pleasures of life. There's the worries of life. There's wealth. There's all this stuff that gets in the way of being a listener of the gospel and the word of God and a believer. Right? You, you kind of go, well, I want to be a Christian, but I've got all these other things I've got to worry about and do and take my time and attention and thought processes I'm planning. And all of a sudden I'm invested in them and whether it's the worries or the, the, the pursuits and uh, the word of God takes a backseat and in the end it's gone, it's choked out by those weeds. And you might think of people who've been in that situation who just life's got either on top of them and they've given up blaming God for all their problems or they've just kind of forgotten about God because they've just got on with doing what they're doing. They're going on adventures, they're going on overseas holidays, they're going on this and that and they're, they're, they're looking to make more money and they're trying to get ahead in life and trying to plan their, it's just, that's all they're thinking. So they're not worried about what God thinks and God's kingdom and God's righteousness. They're just worried about themselves and the words choked out. But the third group, they hear the gospel, they receive the word, they listen intently, and they want it to take root in their life, and it does. And you can see there's a bumper crop of harvest of righteousness. What's the crop? Well, all sorts of things. There's the, well, normally a crop is more seeds, isn't it, right? That's how you know your plants are going well, they start producing more of the same. And so the word of God's coming out and going out, and other people are hearing the word of God, and that's going to their lives too. But there's also the fruit of the Spirit as God takes His Word, applies it to them, and transformed into the likeness of Christ, the image of God, uh, as, you know, and growing in uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. As God does His work in us, as we put to death sin, as we put on righteousness, as we repent, as we give thanks, as we glorify God in everything, as we hunger for for God's heart, for God's life, for God's word, and for God's glory. That's the fruit of the word in our lives. And so really, here's the hearing test, isn't it? Which one are you? Uh, 
you might think, well, I, I feel like I'm all for, all for at different points. There's times when I'm just ignoring. There's times when I feel the opposition and I'm embarrassed. There's times when I'm just so worried and caught up or pursuing my pursuits. And there's times when God's word, well, um, God's saying, well, uh, a couple of things here. One is get real, get real with God's word right let it take root let it dominate your life and let the spirit produce this harvest of righteousness and of glory and of the word of god coming out as well and so put those other things in perspective right get rid of the weeds right get in the deep ground get get the nutrients from the word of god that you need don't be a shallow christian that's going to fall away at first sign of trouble and don't ignore the word altogether like that on the path but also he's giving us a clue as to see why the rest of the gospel happens the way it happens, why it is that people are going to reject him, why it is that people are going to be confused, why it is that people are going to question and, and blame his work on the demons and so on, because they don't listen, right? Whoever has ears to hear, they, are the one, they should listen. And so that's the challenge, isn't it? To recognise that in in the people in the gospel, but also today that we could pray for them that they would listen, and to pray for ourselves and to be those who do have ears and who do listen. Why don't we ask God to help us with all that? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of it. And we pray, please, that we would be that good soil. Please bear fruit in our lives as your gospel and your word take root helps to love jesus to love you to hunger for your glory for your life for your heart for your word and help us to produce an abundance of sharing the great things of the kingdom of god that this word might go out from us that we might be a light to those around and father we do pray that as the word goes out we, we careful how we recognize what's happening Help us not to be too quickly dismissive because sometimes you're working people's long and slow. Uh, but help us to be prayerful, to be persistent, to be um, honest about what we believe. And we pray, please, that you would do your work, that there would be many who do listen, who have ears, and who will come and ask for more and for clarification and for um, the evidence and for. Uh, the explanation of what it all means and how they can have it. And we pray that, that you'll bring them to life. We pray you'll do this amazing work in us, through us, in others around us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.